All right. You have made it to Monday night. And this is Ron Coddington here with you from Military Images Magazine, live from our headquarters, our world headquarters in Arlington, Virginia. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll wait a moment for folks to, uh, to come on. And uh, while we're waiting, I will tell you about uh, our summer issue, which is currently in planning. Uh, we've got, oh gosh, uh, a little bit more than a month um, before we'll be delivering it to uh, the printer and then also doing our digital version for online. So the wheels are turning. We've got a, a bunch of really fascinating stories and departments and all that good stuff that is uh, gonna be coming your way. So if you are a subscriber, uh, thank you very much for helping us do what we do. Uh, and if you're not a subscriber, go to shopmilitaryimages.com and uh, check out all the different subscriptions that we offer. You can get our print subscription, a digital subscription, a print plus digital subscription, however you're interested in getting military images, we're there for you. And I should also mention that uh, our new digital version is now available. It's a premium site. It's password protected. You've got full access to, gosh, the last uh, six years worth of stories. And if you want the entire run of 40 years worth of military images, you're only a link away at jstore.org. That's journalstorage.org. Uh, there's a price to pay um, for, uh, for the older issues, but uh, well worth your time if you're doing research and uh, or just looking to catch up on uh, military images from 1979 unto the present. So really great to have you here. And uh, I think we're going to start uh, by sharing the screen at this point. So um, let's jump in here. And here we go. All right. Uh, as promised, for those of you who saw our ad on, um, uh, on, on Facebook uh, earlier, we're looking at the backdrop business. So. Uh, a really um, interesting subject. And I'm really, really pleased to share this image from Jeff McArdle's collection. Uh, it's sort of the quintessential Union soldier sitting in front of this pristine backdrop with a river, a gunboat, camp scene. Uh, there's the, a little bit of a fort that you can see overlooking the banks of a river, uh, a cannon in the foreground. It's just a wonderful example of a backdrop. And this was featured uh, recently in a column uh, by Adam Fleischer. Adam uh, is one of the newest columnists to join Military Images. And I'm so delighted to have him writing for us and researching for us the work that he has done over the last year or so in his columns is something that I've been long trying to do, which is to begin to get uh, our heads around the enormity of backdrops and just how critical they are in helping us to understand Civil War photography, particularly to classify images. They are just an amazing clue to be able to help locate where images were taken, the photographer who made them, and they can even lead to identifying the individuals who were pictured. So such a wonderful bit of information to hone in on. And Adam has been doing a great job with that. So um, I could go on for hours probably sharing images with you from the magazine, just to give you a sense of the, the wide range of painted backdrops. Uh, just, just wonderful variations. And this one from, from the Brian Boovey collection, 
You've got a cannon, you've got a flag, another scene with a river, another camp uh, vision, camp view on the opposite side of the bank. Um, you have this gentleman, this soldier who is showing us a guidebook, uh, a Southern map book. He's got a painted backdrop behind him with what appears to be perhaps some, uh, I'm not sure if they're quite Sibley tents, but some, some really nice uh, tents. You've got this image from the Britt Eisenberg collection, another scene in the background, another military scene in the background with the hills, with the tents, the cannon, classic motifs to see these military uh, backdrops. Uh, here's another one um, from Ross Kelbaugh's collection. John Jones, the photographer himself, pictured on the left, his assistant, Henry Clark, on the right, hamming it up on a rocking horse uh, with their backdrop. You've got another image uh, from my collection of a uh, cavalryman who is standing in front of a uh, a backdrop of uh, the nation's capital, uh, barely visible in the background is the US Capitol, which has just been completed, or I should say the dome has just been completed. Uh, in the foreground is uh, a Navy, um, part of the Navy Yard facility. Uh, this image from Charles Darden showing uh, another patriotic backdrop with a flag draped. This image a bit more primitive, uh, but still extremely effective in being able to provide a, an environment for a soldier to stand in and imagine a soldier like this one sending home uh, a, a photograph like this, a keepsake that more or less says, I'm in the war, I'm a soldier, and I'm giving you this image to remember me by. Here's another one from Mike Medhurst collection, finely detailed, uh, a St. Louis backdrop, um, really, really well painted, just a fantastic image. Uh, and then another one from Brian Boovey's collection, uh, the classic Benton Barracks backdrop. Uh, those of you who are familiar with backdrops, if there's one backdrop you know, it's the famous Benton Barracks backdrop. So, I was looking at these images uh, one night as I was doing some filing, and the thought occurred to me, who made them? Now, there's a bit of a caveat here, uh, because questions like this are the ones that can set me off, and probably you too. If you let it, you can, it can set you off. It can force you to go down the research rabbit hole, and absolutely no exception, this one did. So as I was thinking about who created these painted backdrops, it occurred to me that I should take a look at a site that I recently got a guest membership to. And this is Luminous Lint. Alan Griffiths, who may be known to some of you, he's involved uh, in the Daguerrean Society. He has uh, a presence on several Facebook pages and he is the editor of Luminous Lint, which is billed as Photography, History, Evolution, and Analysis. I've seen Luminous Lint online. I've visited uh, the website. And um, I've long thought about checking out the premium part of the site. And so I decided to sign up for a guest membership. And I thought, you know what? Let me check this out and um, see what's available on backdrops. Sure enough, there's a wonderful page that gives fantastic detail about these backdrops. So as I was reading through, I didn't have to go very far before this word caught my attention, uh, the word backgrounds. And so that gave me pause. And I thought, OK, backgrounds, um, backgrounds. I know them as backdrops. Uh, that's, that's the 21st century collector in me thinking about backdrops. And so here is Alan and Luminous Lent using the term backgrounds. So I thought, OK, 
let me see what I can do uh, with the word background instead of backdrop. So I went to uh, Google Books, which I've talked about before. If you haven't, I know you've gone to Google. I'm sure you've gone to Google. Uh, go to Google Books and you can do uh, some very fine tuned searches down to the year, down to the date. So I typed in 1861 to 1865 and I searched under painted backgrounds, not backdrops, just to see if I could see anything. Sure enough, Humphrey's Journal of Photography and I've talked about Humphrey's Journal before too. Humphrey's Journal pops up. Now, this is an American publication out of New York City. This one is dated September 15th, 1865, not too long after the end of the war. And Humphrey's Journal, like other journals, are chock filled of information. Uh, they also include ads. So let's go shopping. Let's go shopping in the 19th century. Uh, there's, there's a couple of ads that just blew me away. Uh, the first one here starts off down to the old prices. I don't even know what the old prices were, but we're looking at the new prices for September 1865 for John B. Purdy and Company of Canal Street in New York City. So if we go down, we'll look at the old painted background Excelsior. And remember, here's that term background. This is the search term that caught my attention. And the fine print says, the leading artists in the country, we don't know who they are because the ad doesn't tell us, but says they've pronounced our painted ground unsurpassed. And it continues about all of the good things that their backgrounds have to offer. If you go down a little bit further in this ad, check this out. New and beautiful designs producing a surprisingly natural effect in the picture. And they go on to list the subject matter for these painted backgrounds. Landscape, military, naval, parlor, hall, library, park views, exteriors, interiors, architectural scenery, window, box scenes. I know you've seen all of these. Here they are listed and they're being sold out of Canal Street in New York City. Also, it says convertible into either foreground or background, an interesting detail. As if that weren't enough, here's another ad by the uh, Benjamin French and Company. And uh, they are also in, uh, they're, they're in the Northeast actually, and the uh, more New England, apologies. Uh, they're talking about their improved photographic background by Peter Fales of New Bedford, Massachusetts. So here we go, improved photographic background. Uh, they talk about these backgrounds have the appearance of unfinished cloth. And that stopped me because we're no longer talking about painted backgrounds, we're talking about the very simple uh, light colored cloth backgrounds that you so often see in Civil War photography. And in the fine print, it says the above backgrounds have the appearance of unfinished cloth, which gives a very soft effect, very durable, not liable to show indentures or marks from rubbing. It's the new improved cloth backdrop and you can get it at the special price for 25 cents per square foot. There's the details right there. And they sell them in sizes that are six by seven and a half feet or the extra large size, seven and a half by 10 feet. Now, those of you who know Civil War photography have seen plenty of images where the edges of the backdrop are visible. And now you know why they roughly measure in that six to seven and a half foot range up to 10 feet. Here they are being commercially sold 25 cents a square foot. So images like this one from Tevin Canberg's collection, that cloth backdrop in the background, who knows, it might have come from Peter Fales 
in New Bedford, Massachusetts, may have been an order that was shipped to wherever this photographer was located to create this neutral background in front of which this soldier was able to have his likeness made. Now, if you went for the large size, it's going to cost you $18.75. Now that's an $1865. Translate that to today's dollars, you're going to be making about a $300 investment for the backdrop in your uh, wet plate studio. So if you want to make tin types or ambro types, uh, carts to visit, other albumin prints, get your $304 backdrop. Now, another publication that I found dates from 1862. This is the Photographic News Almanac out of London. And uh, they've got an ad in here as well. They talk about a series of cleverly painted backgrounds and profile accessories. So check this out. We are talking about London and we're talking about uh, a provider that sells not only the backdrops, or the backgrounds in 19th century terminology, but also selling accessories to go along with it. This includes rep uh, columns, vases, balustrades for exteriors, bookcases, chimney pieces, writing tables, looking glasses, all of this and more. So uh, I haven't really thought about this before, but it's very possible that the photographer who invents, invested in a painted backdrop was also purchasing or had the opportunity to purchase accessories, which nowadays we, we sort of call them, uh, we dismiss them in a way as props. Um, but those props, uh, those vases, uh, tables, all of that were furnishings and they were part of a more thoughtful arrangement that combined with the background made for an environment that became more realistic uh, and more compelling, more desirable to the sitter who was stopping by the studio to have their photograph made. So what we know from all of this, from tonight's presentation or a little trip down the, the research rabbit hole, and trust me, there's a long way to go. And this is one of these episodes where uh, it's not a clean ending. There's a lot more work to do, but I wanted to get a little bit of this going in hopes that maybe some of you um, can help. Maybe you can help answer some of these questions or add detail to the question that sent me down the rabbit hole in the first place. So uh, what we do know is that painted backgrounds, I'm gonna start calling them backgrounds, uh, were sold commercially. Yes, there are a bunch of outstanding questions. And here's a couple of them that, that uh, are probably highest on my list. How much did they cost in the course of my investigations, which I will grant you, I didn't spend a terribly long time, but just enough to get excited. How much did they cost? I did not find a price tag. Um, but if you can imagine $18.75 for a plain cloth backdrop or $300 in today's money, I have, I have no doubt that a painted backdrop was many more times expensive than a simple cloth backdrop. Now, another question, did local artists also create them? My instinct is to say yes. Um, uh, and I have a new thought, which is maybe just maybe they were copying the commercial models. So, you know, you, as, as you think through the backdrops that I showed, sorry, the backgrounds that I showed at the beginning of this episode, um, they all have some real similarities. The river, the boats, the campgrounds, uh, the cannon. Um, were those created by an artist independently, a local artist? Or was that artist copying something? Was it a painting? Was it a painted background that was perhaps done by one of these commercial outfits in New York or Massachusetts? 
big question that I know I've talked about with a number of collectors, have any survived? I've yet to find one, but maybe you know where, where one might be. So if you do, if you have the answer to this question or any other questions or have additional details to the question of backdrops, drop me a line at militaryimages at gmail.com or on Facebook, you can find us uh, right here where you're listening to this episode um, or here on YouTube, go to Facebook and check us out. Uh, go to our website, militaryimagesmagazine.com uh, and uh, let us know what you think. So that's it for tonight's episode. It's been great. I've enjoyed sharing all this with you and uh, I wish you a great night. Happy hunting for Civil War photographs and thanks for listening.